than we used to. Yeah, I think that's actually going to be a really important card in the matchup, to be honest, because we might be seeing that Galarian Weezing be thrown into the active position early to try and shut off the crazy code from the Porygon Z. So definitely an interaction we'll have to watch throughout this series. I think it's going to one we're going to see, and it looks like we are ready to head on into the match. So let's head on over to game one and see if Cramorant can flip enough heads or the Eternatus <laughs> deck can slow him down enough. Yeah, although Cramorant is flipping coins, which a lot of players will try and work against a lot of the time, they want to have guaranteed uh, damage in play. There's just so many coins that you get to flip with this deck <laughs> when you eventually factor in all of the powerful colorless energies and you have the triple acceleration energies. You can deal a massive heap of damage as it looks like we're kicking off from Robin's side. He has the quick ball that can go ahead and establish himself, uh, most likely a Porygon here. Yeah, you need to get that Porygon Z. Of course, Porygon Z lets you attach as much special energy during your turn as you like. You're usually limited to one energy attachment during your turn, but Porygon Z says, nope, not listening to that. I will attach as much as I like. You've then got Cramorant, where you flip one coin for each energy attached to it, and you deal 80 damage for each head. So you've got some natural synergy there. You use Porygon Z to pile energy on, and then you hope you flip enough heads with Cramorant V Max to deal enough damage. And, and something like a turn Eternatus, right? You're talking 340 HP, the highest HP we've seen in the game, and actually that is well within range of a Cramorant V Max. Yeah, that's what sets this archetype aside from basically every other deck. Cramorant V Max can knock out opposing V Maxes, and without weakness, no other V Max can boast that. So that's really the the win condition of this Cramorant V Max archetype. And let's not forget that the Cramorant V can also put in a lot of work here. Looks like Robin actually did prize a couple of his regular Cramorant Vs. So he's going to have to hope that the two that he has uh, access to is going to do a lot of work here. A pretty awkward start. He had to get rid of one of his two Glimwood Tangles. And Frederico is actually playing Chaotic Swell. So Robin's hand isn't looking ideal for next turn. Frederico does already have that energy drop. And he can also Crobat for one additional card here. Absolutely, he can. It's, it's it's a bit of a slow start. I mean, you don't really... Oh, he's going to drop the Marnie. There we go. So you don't usually want to Crobat for one card. Of course, Crobat is limited to once during your turn. But you need to get your Pokemon established. Eternatus does more damage for each of your Darkness Pokemon in wow. play. That's a nice <laughs> hand that Robin Finn marnie into, mind you. That's incredible. It looks like Frederico really with the <laughs> Marnie here. He's hoping to find some of these crushing hammers that he plays. Does fire one off here. Unfortunately gets tails, but Power Accelerator is a big deal. He wasn't able to establish any more energies into play, which he certainly would have liked. But look at this. Robin's got himself naturally into rare candy Porygon Z from a Marnie, no less. And, and triple acceleration energy. Here. Yeah. So he can he can Skylar most likely just for a Dedene or a Crobat of his own. He can probably has to throw away the triple acceleration energy, but gives him a lot of push potential here. He's already got the telescopic sight as well. So he could be looking to take an easy two prize knockout with spit shot this turn, just onto that benched crowbat. So it doesn't even need the VMAX uh, out the gate this turn, really. No, that is lovely. Of course, Cramorant can do 160 damage to the bench. Telescopic Sight means it's an extra 30. As long as you're attacking a Pokemon GX or V, it means instead of just going after Dedenne, you can go after Crobat as well. So you're right, he does have to discard the Triple Acceleration Energy, but you need your Porygon Z and your Rare Candy, and that Telescopic Sight is what's going to get you the KO. So as long as Robin can draw a couple of energy off this Crobat, we are going to see an early two-prize advantage for Robin. This is incredible pressure as well. Look at this. He's got himself enough energies. He also has more potential push with Dedenne GX if he wishes also. This is looking excellent for Robin. Yeah, this is a very nice start. He's got the Recycle Energy, of course. One of the things about Spit Shot is that you have to discard the energy when you use it. So the Recycle Energy bouncing back to your hand is an absolutely great advantage there. And it's now up to Robin, like, how many of these energy does he actually want to attach? Of course, if he does use Spit Shot, he is discarding them all. Does he want to lose three of his, you know, that many energy so quickly? But then again, it's Capture Energy, so I think he's probably going to be all right. Yeah, I think you just pile everything into the active and hope to get a change into that VMAX. I mean, if you take the knockout this turn, you wipe all energy off the board. This could just get incredible here. He's got a couple of capture energies, so he can fill his board quite happily. He can also um, quick ball just to thin his deck as well if he wants to, because he's already holding on to a Dedenne GX. 
You're going to see that backup Cramorant coming in from the capture energy. It is a hand attachment from the Crazy Code, so you do get the activation, which is a nice little thing to bear in mind as the games go forward. But so far, four energies onto that Cramorant V. He's just going to go ahead, take another Porygon out for the backup. He can then quick ball away uh, the Porygon that's in his hand and probably thin yet another card from his deck, probably just the other Porygon at that point. And then he's just looking for that VMAX, really. Yeah, I mean, this is looking brilliant. You've got the backup plan. If you whiff the VMAX, then you can still get the two prize KO on that Crobat anyway. But obviously what you want to do... Oh, oh and there is the oh, VMAX. Boy. <laughs> a couple more energies as well. This is incredible. This is going to be a We're gonna... huge KO if we get the head splits. We are. And of course, Robin did have the Glimwood Tangle in hand, but it did go away with the Marnie. But... I think that is about the only thing that's happened that isn't ideal for Robin so far. This has been just a phenomenal first couple of turns. What do we see with Max Jet? Oh, oh. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh what a mess. He needed the three heads and was only able to achieve two. So that's a bit of a downer for Robin, but the positioning is still insane. He's got the ideal turn two board state, essentially, with a giant Cramorant, and wow, Frederico has... Nothing in response. He's just able to hit for 30 as Robbins is going to carry on flipping coins at this stage. I mean, what an incredible board state he has comparatively. He's even managed to get himself a backup Porygon Z just in case one goes down. So this is just... I mean, at this stage, if you're Frederico, what do you do? You, you kind of have to try and KO the Cramorant. Now, the good news is that Cramorant is, I believe, now in range of Eternatus' attack if he gets the VMAX and an energy and four more bench Pokemon. But even now, that is asking an awful lot straight off the bat. And Robin is almost certainly going to be up two prizes unless things go very, very <laughs> wrong. Yeah, Federico can see it. He knows that he's really not holding on to much. Going down a couple prizes really early on in that game with no energy remaining in the field means that that Cramorant is just going to continue to flip those coins and continue to munch through the board and get an even greater advantage. What an incredible Marnie that was. I mean, Robin's <laughs> hand was looking very poor, to be honest. He was really in top deck mode of his own, but it's pretty rare that someone's holding on to a two rare candy hand and then you get Marnied into another rare candy plus the stage two that you actually need. What, a, what an incredible Marnie that was. Yeah, I mean, it was such a good Marnie, he actually had to discard the triple acceleration energy, which of course gives you free coin flips on a Cramer and VMAX. It's a phenomenal card. And Robin was like, you know what, I've drawn so well, I'll, I'll just discard that and carry on with my turn. And I mean, Federico's hand must have been terrible because, you know, Robin was going up two prizes. There was a chance of a return KO if Frederico had a really good turn, but unfortunately that was just absolutely not going to happen apparently. Frederico scoops them. We're going to head on into game two where, I mean, certainly Frederico is hoping things are going to go quite a bit better. Yeah, absolutely. It can't get much worse than that. He got a power <laughs> accelerator for no backup energy attachments. He wasn't able to money himself into any additional draw, no Crobats, no ball search whatsoever. One of the best things about Eternatus VMAX is that you have so much ball search, you get to play that higher Marnie count and know that on the other side of that hand, you're more than likely going to get out of it. But in this case, not so. Frederico, he's going to start off this second game. He gets his early game attachment down and passes it straight over to Robin. No, I mean, that's, that's not a terrible start, to be fair. You want the energy on so you can get the turn two attack. And that's what Frederico's rolling for here, right? He really wants to try and make sure he gets a big attack with Eternatus on turn two before Robin's got a chance to evolve up and really get going. And Robin is playing a setup deck. He needs his stage two. He needs his evolved V Max. There is a chance that Robin does have a slower start and Frederico can take advantage. Of course, Crammer and V having beat catch is... Um, quite a huge advantage when you're talking about that. Yeah, and I think Robin's hand is already pretty good. He's got this incense that he's probably just going to put back into the deck with a communication. It means he can go ahead and grab that first Cramorant. Then he can also capture energy out a second Cramorant. He's already got two Porygons, so he can do both those things. He's losing a powerful colorless energy, which is a little bit awkward. But outside of that, I mean, he can just go ahead and play Professor's Research and get a fresh seven. So not bad overall. He could also value the powerful colorless more uh, because it does mean that you need one less head flip he actually does go for the powerful colorless i don't mind this at all because like we said one less flip that you require is actually really important especially when you know that frederico may be denying your glimwood tangle with chaotic swell 
Yeah, absolutely. It means you need to flip four heads rather than five. That's, like you say, it's a very big deal. We do, and from Robin's point of view here, I mean, the good news is he's got a bunch of energy, but he doesn't have a way to get that Cramorant in the active. Beat catch there for a rare candy Porygon Z would have been absolutely perfect, but there's no way to get the Porygon out of the active, so he, he changes it over to Frederico, and let's see if Frederico's got a better hand than last time. Looks like he's already powered up that Eternatus V as long as he's able to find a V Max, which he now does. Fires off a Crushing Hammer, doesn't get heads, unfortunately. And again, it's down to that Marnie. Once again, most likely helping Robin out, realistically, because like we said, he didn't have any way to get the Porygon Z into play. And now, yeah, a pretty reasonable hand. He can try and do some Crobat digs before going for the Dene GX. So again, the Marnie actually bailing Robin a little bit here. Frederico does find himself a backup Eternatus, also Great Balls into a Spiritomb. He's got enough damage now for a KO. He can also build Spite, uh, which is just something to have in the back to try and skew that prize trade if ever you're able. Crow batting up as well, so a much better start than before. Yeah, I mean, the turn two VMAX with a two energy on is what you're looking for in an Eternatus deck. You just want to make sure you've got that Eternatus ready to go turn two. Because like we saw in, in game one, although Robin can do huge damage, there's always a chance you just flip too many tails and then that Eternatus gets to survive for a few hits and really start going through Robin's board. It is a possibility, and I think when you're Frederico, until you can get those Spiritomb hitting really good damage, that's essentially what you're going for here. You need to get your early Eternatus, try and get some KOs, and just kind of hope that Cramorant VMAX doesn't go off. We do see Frederico valuing that uh, new Galarian coughing, or the, the regular coughing, it's just a Galarian wheezing, right? Uh, right. But it has that new Ascension attack that can allow you to get into a wheezing later. Looks like Robin here, he's got himself a capture energy which he can turn attach. He probably quick balls away quick ball here, looking for Crobat. If he's able to Crobat into a rare candy, he could then pop off massively by looking for a VMAX and looking for other things here. Let's see what he takes. Yeah, he's exactly going to go for this quick ball play. I feel like Crobat makes a lot of sense. You have yeah. a huge high roll potential again, where you flip four heads and you just knock out the Eternatus and all energy in play. So... It's a really big push that he can try and make here with Crobat plus the Dene, and then hopefully a draw supporter in between as well. Yeah, I mean, if Robin can get a KO here, that would all but end the game. That would put him in just a ridiculously good position. And you're right, playing the Crobat here, it means you get to draw four cards. Porygon Z is already in hand. You just need that rare candy. He is going to hit double rare candy as it happens. <laughs> This is really nice. He can Dede change now, and then he still has a supporter after this Dede change, potentially. So a ton of push. Still does need that VMAX and a ton of energies. The Skylar could help out as well. So he has found Glimwood Tangle. He has found that VMAX. He's actually a little bit short on energies here, surprisingly. Uh, not very often you can say that, but he does have four here. He would need to get all heads if he was to take a knockout. He does have the potential to take a spit shot two prize KO as well. That might be what his debate is here whether or not to flip some coins or just take the damage as it lies. He does already have the telescopic sight attack, so... Oh, the debate is real here. We don't usually see players thinking this much, but he is going up into the VMAX. Usually the VMAX is an absolute given. Cramer and V just happens to have a really good attack. I mean, Cramer and V has been played since Sword and Shield came out. It has been a staple deck in, a staple card, sorry, in Welder decks and a whole bunch of others. We've seen it in Frostmoth decks. We've seen it all over. It just so happens it now has a really good VMAX to go along with it. So it looks like Robin's got the Glimwood Tangles, got the four energy. I mean, what are you Skylar for here? Because you can't Skylar four energy, unfortunately. Yeah, I think you just grab research for next turn so you yeah. can have that reload. Uh, your Cramorant isn't going to get knocked out. So you can flip these coins. If you hit all four heads, oh. it's insane. <laughs> he probably takes these reflips here. Um, but uh, doing equally as poorly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly so the same. The flips. Um, but he's hoping that next turn the Cramorant takes a big hit. You can profess his research, then try and find some triple accelerations and finish off this Eternatus. We must stress that there's only two Glimwood Tangle in the deck. Robin has established one early, and uh, if Frederico can find um, that Chaotic Swell, he can completely deny those reflip turns. So that's important to note here. It would essentially counter both the stadiums in one, which would be huge. And I believe this is open deck list. I believe you can see your opponent's deck list in Players' Cup 3. 
and he definitely could in Players' Cup too. Mm. And that means that the players are aware of this. That's why we don't see Robin playing Glenwood Tangle early, because, you know, that chaotic swell, it, it's too good of a counter, quite frankly. So you play it when you need it. And I want to point out, of the three times that Robin has flipped, he's gone under 50% all three <laughs> times. Yeah, you never want to have that low side of variance. I mean, you could argue that he's had the good side of variance just from, you know, Marnie's <laughs> helping him out quite a lot. But there's yeah. even more variance to be had exactly with this deck because of these coin flips. It's what puts a lot of players off. It, Kramer and VMAX was originally seen as a little bit of a joke deck. When we saw the card, people went, oh, it's, it's like that old Blissey that nobody really played and... It's kind of like that Maractus that nobody plays. We've seen attacks like this in the past, but the thing about Cramorant is, because it's colourless and it can take such good advantage of those cards like powerful colourless energy, capture energy, recycle energy that are colourless, it just, with Porygon Z, is such a great option. And this did get third place at a 2,000-person tournament in Taiwan a couple of weeks ago. So this isn't just Robin, this is... Cramer and VMAX is a legitimate top-tier archetype now. Yeah, a couple of big differences. Like you said, the recycle energy obviously being a huge one, and just that Cramer sticks in play. So you can take turns off where you don't really do much, and you're still just there flipping, you know, sometimes five, six, seven, eight coins. And you just, you know, even if you are flipping the coins, you just have such a good multiplier that you still get there a lot of the time. Now, we Crushing do see... coming in now, yeah. Yeah, Crushing Hammer's come down. Frederica's actually, he's established his board quite well, but Eternatus just doesn't do enough damage. And there's no backup attacker, really. Frederico doesn't have an energy on his bench to Eternatus. And if Robin takes a big KO here, that could be huge. Uh, we do find a couple energies here. No guarantees, but at least the Glimwood Tangle has stayed in play. Federico really was probably digging hard for that one counter stadium or dangerous drill even as an option that he does play in his deck. So there's no... Surefire way of taking a KO for Robin here. Only five coin flips in air quotes to try and reach that <laughs> knockout. And I'm looking at Frederico's board. That Spirit Tomb could actually be potentially getting a return KO next turn. So Frederico might not need a backup Eternatus here. That Spirit Tomb could both take a KO and give him a turn to attach two Eternatus. So I'm watching that Spirit Tomb right now because if Robin gets a KO here and it's kind of looking like that's quite likely... I think Spirit Tomb, maybe with a Galarian Zigzagoon, could save the day. Now we see the heads coming out. <laughs> it's over 50%. That's enough. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> and like you say, it's actually a really big deal because Robin only plays one copy of Telescopic Sight. So if this Spirit Tomb does take that KO, it's actually really going to be effective at skewing that prize race. Otherwise, you could just, you know, find that Telescopic Sight and spit shot a Crobat after you deal with that Spirit Tomb. Uh, but now it's actually going to force Robin to find um, Gust instead. And he actually doesn't play any Gust in his deck, so, yeah, he, he has to go through whatever Federico puts up, essentially. And that, well, I mean, it basically turns Spirit Tomb into a, into a free turn for Federico. You've got to KO two Eternatus V-Max. If you KO a Spirit Tomb, wow. you've still got to KO two Eternatus V-Max. Wow, look at this. So many energies that Robin has drawn into. <laughs> uh, after the Spirit Tomb most likely comes in and takes the KO here, he will be getting two Recycle Energies back into his hand. So potentially what he could try and go for is maybe Cramorant coming in and just spit-shotting the VMAX, hoping that Spiritomb just is out of range on too many Pokemon. That could be his line. We'll see what Federico has up his sleeve from here after that Marnie. Absolutely. It's, um... I mean, it's, it's given Robin a lot of energy and not much else, but then he doesn't... Well, they suppose he's going to need to be Max next turn, though, potentially, so things could get awkward. If Frederico is able to chain a couple of KOs together, this could be... Oh, we do see nice. the dangerous drill. You called it, Joe. Yeah, it's a really oh, big like... deal here. You need to get rid of this Glimwood Tangle. It's too scary to... Especially when you're giving your opponent back two energies straight away through these recycles. As soon as Robin's deck is sort of... Mid to that sort of mid to late game point where you just get that guaranteed damage back, you really need to get rid of those Glimwood Tangles. Yeah, it's it's absolutely big. And now, you know, Robin, it, it's so hard when you're only playing two of them. It's not it's not gonna stay in play that much. Now here does come the Spirit Tomb. It's hitting for 70 damage as it stands at the moment. I mean, it's one of the best single prize attackers that we've got around. It's just it pops up in so many different decks. It's it's really efficient. Yeah, and it's doing exact math, right? Or do we... Uh, the Cramorant actually has 330 hits. I think points. it's 330, so... So the build oh. finally gets him there. There we go. So now he is dealing enough 
with that anguish cry to take a three prize response KO. He's essentially setting himself up for boss's orders with the Eternatus VMAX to close the game here. So he's in a pretty decent spot and Robin can't do much to deny this. He plays one copy of Reset Stamp and his hand is entirely energy right now. So he's in need of a top deck. <laughs> He really is in need of a top deck, because if that Cramorant goes down, there really isn't very well. I mean, I suppose, sorry, Frederick has only got two prizes remaining. That would definitely end the game. Yeah. So, I mean, we need a big KO here. And as it stands, like you say, there's no V Max, there's no gusting, there's no draw. There's there's really not very much of anything on Robin's side. And he draws another energy. So it looks like what Robin's gonna have to do is he's gonna have to take the KO with Porygon Z this turn with a triple acceleration and then just pile five energies onto the Cramorant V. <laughs> I think that's what we'll be seeing this turn. <laughs> so that he can tantrum take the one prize, force Federico <laughs> to have Gust, and uh, yeah, really, <laughs> that's all he can do at this stage. He might want to hold one energy just for retreat outs, but he loses to Gust regardless. So he has to pile five energies onto this Cramorant, I think. Uh, you can't really thin the deck of any Pokemon because you want that board space to be open if he does draw any ball search cards, anything like that. So you probably just swing the capture on and leave the triple acceleration in your hand. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is exactly what you have to do here. You can't use any of these cards because you're hurting your outs um, for other Dedenne and Crobat, I think, if there are any remaining... Oh, no, there aren't any Cro yeah. uh, in his prize cards, right? So he's hoping to take one off of these prizes. So that's can tantrum, it. take the KO, hope to find one of those helpful V or GX Pokemon from the prizes here. Does and he does. The Dene, so it is, the ball is in Federico's court to have a Gust card here. Not much, his hand size is giant. We do see a Dark <laughs> Energy, and inevitably there we the boss is there. Yeah. Yeah, so Federico does get the KO on the Dene. We'll even it up at one game apiece. And... Well, I think we've just seen the upside and the downside of Crammer and VMAX. If you don't take those big KOs early and your opponent gets a bit of a ball stake going and you can't return the KO, that that game looked a lot more like everyone expected Crammer and VMAX to look. <laughs> yeah, Crammer looks a lot less impressive when you're two-shotting other VMAXs like any other one would in the format, right? You're yeah. hoping to gain advantages with big blowout one-hit KOs or that spit shot taking knockouts, especially on Crobats. So. Uh, Robin having to establish the telescopic sight early as well hurt him a little bit, so he couldn't have those options available to him. But yeah, essentially Eternatus just was a good pace setter, got that early prize on the Porygon, which really helped him out later down the line for his prize race. It really did. It worked out perfectly in terms of getting to six prizes, and that's what Eternatus does. It's two energy, it's a single evolution into a VMAX, and you just do a huge amount of damage and run through. Eternatus has been doing this since it released, and honestly, it's one of the very best decks in the format for a reason. The good news is we are in a best of three, though, so let's head on over to game three and see which of these players is going to be able to advance through the winner's bracket. Like we said earlier, we're in round six here. They are two wins away, if they stay in the winner's bracket, from making the global finals. If you drop to the loser's bracket, that is going to add some more victories needed to get through. That is not where either of these players wants to be. And Robin gets the advantage of going first. He has early game ball search, which is great. He even has picked up the Porygon Z now. So he could simply quick ball away, potentially the reset stamp, if he just wants to have a backup Pokemon here. Or he could hold his entire hand, knowing that he can Skylar for the rare candy next turn. And then evolve into that VMAX and hope to um, just quick ball into Dede Change, that sort of thing, and really push on from there. Um, so yeah, not a bad start. Some of the huge advantages of this deck, as you've already mentioned, Ross, Capture Energy just gives you so many good outs to get your early game basics into play. It's such a good card. And it's one of the things I love about Cramorant. You get all of these colorless energies that are really good, but the downside is they only provide colorless energy. And then you get a colorless deck like this that can attach as many of them during turn as you like. You know, we're not seeing draw energy from Robin that draws you a card when you attach. It's a great card, but it doesn't make the cut because we've got powerful colorless energy, recycle, capture, triple acceleration. There are quite literally too many good colorless special <laughs> energy that, you know, something like draw energy would be great in this deck. And I've seen Liss playing it, but it's just not good enough. And you're right, Robin has set himself up beautifully for turn two. What an insane hand he's sat on. He's got that <laughs> Skylar rare candy and he can go quick ball Crobat for five. 
and De Dene for an additional six. He's He's got everything he wants. This is the first hand that he's holding on to that Federico should not be Marnie. <laughs> uh, but, well, he should be Marnie, right? Uh, because the hand is so strong. Whereas previously, he's Marnie to help out Robin. This time, he's actually holding on to a gas hand. And we actually see the professor's research here throwing away a couple of darkness energies, a couple of switches, as Federico is missing his Eternatus V right now. And we saw a Crobat for zero cards, which, you know, crushing hammer heads is nice. But the thing about Crobat for zero cards is, that generally speaking, you play your support or you play a couple cards, then Crobat gives you an extra advantage. Playing Crobat here, because, I mean, if nothing else, that Evil Tal war would have been the lone basic, and it... I'm not seeing much going on on Frederico's board. He does have the quick ball, though. Let's hope he's got an energy. Oh, had to get rid of VMAX to play it. It's always really sad when you don't attach an energy and then you play a supporter and then you don't draw an energy. Mm -hmm. And Eternatus, you know, there's no other way that you can manipulate energy cards. It's simply one attachment per turn is all you're getting. So you need to make the most out of them. And missing a turn of attachment is always very, very detrimental. He's going to pick up a Crobat here. So he didn't use Dark Asset on the first Crobat. He just benched it raw. So he could still be digging here with his second Crobat. I believe he didn't draw off the first one. He does No, he didn't draw any cards. Which is nice. Yeah, so the Crobat is optional. So this time he is able to choose to Dark Asset, which is really important. He does get that energy. He ha finds himself an early game Spiritomb to begin building that spike. We saw how important it was in that second game. And doesn't look like he's going to be going for Power Accelerator here. We don't see any other backup Eternatus. That would be the telltale sign that you'd go for. Um, he may want some chip damage in, though. It's a difficult one because you know that there's the burst potential that Robin has. So I like leaving the Evil Tile in the active here. Yeah, no, I like it a lot as well. I mean, that Spirit Tomb was actually really, really important with the lack of gusting in Robin's deck and the fact that Eternatus is going to be about 60 damage away from getting a KO. It, assuming a full bench, that is that that spirit tomb being able to take a KO while only giving up one prize is absolutely huge. Now I'm fairly sure we are going to see the Skylar for a rare candy here, and then it really is just down to how many cards can Robin draw, potentially using a Dedene and a Crowback, getting the energy, but. We're worried a little bit here, of course, because you don't really want to KO that evil towel. Your route to victory, you want it to be KO2 Eternatus V Max. So now that we've seen the evolution, it does look like it is going to be just a KO on the evil towel. Hopefully, we will see a spit shot into a Crobat V later on to essentially offset the KO on the evil towel. Yeah, that's the only way he can make that map work out for him. He does get rid of the uh, reset stamp for this quick ball here. Obviously, he doesn't want to give Federico an additional card. He may also choose to play the Evolution Incense just to remove it uh, so he can draw an additional card with his own Crobat here. So just like last time, on these push turns, you play your Skylar, you then play your Incense for no effect, you candy into your Porygon Z, and then you're hoping that the 11 cards that you're drawing this turn is going to be enough to find your energy cards. You would certainly hope so. <laughs> Especially, the Yveltal is small, so you only need a few heads on your side. He needs three requisite energies to attack. That's what he's got already. He can now um, communication back in the second backup to Dene for him as well. He can go ahead and establish a second Cramorant. He finds some powerful colorless energies. He finds one Recycle so far. All good news for him. Pretty much the ideal cards he could have received from that Crobat. Nothing wasted at all. And he's still going to get an additional six here, which is excellent. Yeah, this is wonderful. Using that communication to grab yourself another basic and then playing the Dene without discarding anything from your hand. That is, that is absolutely beautiful. I mean, Robin's deck, we've seen over the three games, it's, it's running quite well. We're, it's setting up. I mean, in all three games, we've seen a setup. In game two, it really was flipping tails and not being able to keep up that speed in the mid game. And that turn where he ended up with seven energies in hand and nothing else. That's what's hurt Robin here. In terms of the early game getting rolling, this Cramorant deck seems to be performing admirably. Here is the additional six. He does find a couple more energy cards with two powerful colorless already attached. He only needs one heads flip here. It always feels good to attach more Recycle Energies, though, because then even if you are Hand Disrupted, you can uh, still get out of that. He could just throw everything into the active, knowing that his Cramorant cannot be one hit KO'd. He could also choose to hold it. I think that's also not a bad decision. He can use it potentially for retreat outs if uh, Federico is trying to go for stalling plays or anything like that. Um, and he already thinks that he has 
pretty much variants on his side to take this one prize. Yeah, flipping zero heads here would be very upsetting. You've, you've got to think, right? There's what, I think a, a 15 in 16 chance of hitting at least one heads here. Oh, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> you had to say the odds, Ross. You had to <laughs> say Why it. did I say the odds? <laughs> <laughs> Curse of the commentator for Robin as Federico <laughs> gets a free turn here. Incredible so to sorry, see. Robin. <laughs> as, uh, yeah, Federico, just a free turn that he seriously was not expecting. And uh, he's able to develop his board a little bit here. VMAX into play, Zigzagoon starts coming down. These uh, headbutt tantrums aren't integral for the uh, math fixing, so he's just going to swing one onto a Porygon Z by the looks of things. Let's see if he has... Uh, any way that he can launch his own attack here. If he has supporters, energy cards, that's what he's looking for. We haven't seen any draw from him just yet. No, well, one thing Federico doesn't play in his deck is Scoop Up Net. And some Eternatus builds do play Scoop Up Net. Mine certainly does. And there was always, if you were, that there's this weird potential of maybe I can get six Galarian Zigzagoon in one turn and then get a one-hit KO. It's unlikely, but the possibility is there. Without Scoop Up Net in the deck, Frederico, like you said, cannot get a one-hit KO on a Cramorum. So now, what do we do here? Do we maybe poke a little bit with Spiritomb? and then try and finish with Eternatus and say, look, I've got a giant Eternatus, you have got to care it right now, bearing in mind I've just taken most of your energy off the board, or do you go into the Eternatus now and use Spiritomb potentially as a backup? We did see an energy being taken away with that dangerous drill. Yeah, that's not a bad play. He wants to limit the uh, VMAX as much as possible, give Robin the least amount of coin flips. As you see, sometimes they can just go wrong for him. Federico, he hasn't slammed down any energy card just yet. As you say, there's a small debate here whether he wants to get the early chip damage in with his Spiritomb, if possible, or if he thinks that Robin's hand is limited enough that he could risk using Eternatus aggressively to get the damage just straight onto the board. So it could be a debate here. It is going to go into that Spiritomb. It's the play that we saw last game pretty effectively for him last time. And it looks like at the moment we're just going to see 70 with the Anguish Cry. I, I do, I like this play. The idea is you bring in the Eternatus to take the KO, and then you've got the undamaged Eternatus, and potentially all the energy has gone off the field, just making Robin's job of getting the KO that much more difficult. Good news for Robin, he's got plenty of energy in hand, he's got a decent board set up. Bad news, as we've mentioned a couple times, and it really does bear repeating, there's no gusting in Robin's deck. Right now, using a boss's orders to try and grab an Eternatus and flipping some coins, that would be a really good way to go about doing it. If all he's doing is just getting a KO on the Spiritomb here, is that really enough board pressure at this stage of the game? And his hand is looking really weak after this play as well, especially if Federico can respond with a KO. Robin's really going to need the help of this prize card here to see if it can get him out of the rut that he's in. He doesn't really want to commit another board space to um, any of those small helpful Pokemon, so finding that research is a really nice prize for him, keeping him in the game, I'd say. It is, and if I'm Robin, I'm upset right now because he finally flips three out of four heads, <laughs> and it's when you're attacking a Spiritomb. Yeah, a bit of over, over KO there, doing <laughs> easily enough damage to deal with a little spirit team with only 40 hit points remaining. Federico is now finally going to commit energy to his Eternatus VMAX, also fires off a Crushing Hammer, and he's playing the Marnie here. He still needs a few Pokemon, I believe, to reach with his Dread End here. Um, so he's going to look to find some more Pokemon to put into play. Another Returnatus is a good start for him. I believe he needs a full bench. Full bench would be 270, plus a 70 on his 340. That would be the KO. So I think as it stands at the moment, Frederico's actually two Pokemon shy. And there is the Crobat drawing another four cards. Can one of them be a Pokemon? Desperately needs one here. He has a few coughings still waiting around. He's got more Eternatus Vs he could play. In the worst case, he could put down a Crobat V as well, just for no effect, just for damage. Does he get there? Let's have a look. He plays two Galarian Zigzagoon as well. He may just be sure. I, I imagine you'd slam it down straight away if you had it. I would it. think so. <laughs> <laughs> also got himself the Celtic Swell, which is also a huge deal, making his Eternatus even more uh, tanky, hopefully. He does have that Quick Ball, so he will be establishing that final Pokemon that he needs to take the knockout here. Over a couple of turns, it's going to be an Eternatus V as his selection, and he's going to go ahead in this prize race now. 
He is, and let's not forget, he did hit a heads-on crushing hammer onto that bench crammer, and so not only do we see the KO, but actually knocks a bunch of energy off. Of course, the fact that two of them were recycle energy obviously helps hugely here. And honestly, like, as far as I'm concerned, this is the turn for Robin. Robin needs a huge KO here. Because, frankly, th there's no energy on a bench to turn at us. So if Robin can get a KO here, then Frederico is going to really struggle to two-hit KO it. Because you need two energy on the Eternatus, but then if you attach to Spirit Tomb, you can also attach to Eternatus. A big KO here is going to put Frederico in a super awkward position energy-wise. So... I think at this stage, Robin just really needs to try and, well, just get the energy on and go a little bit nuts. Yeah, interesting. He he chose not to take the capture energy proc here. I thought he may have potentially gone for Skylar for Telescopic Sight, take the two prize KO that's on the board and just capture another Cramorant to the bench and then just try and take stuff off the prizes that help you out a little bit. This time, he has to Skylar to try and find a Dedene, most likely, and just dig through his deck. And it means that he really needs to find a lot from the from this draw here. I feel like the capture energy for the backup Cramorant was probably the strongest move he could have gone for. He's eyeing things up now. He has one Cramorant VMAX in the deck. He's eyeing up what else he can do. He can play the uh, telescopic... Oh, sorry, he can play the Glimwood Tangle just to bounce. But still looking a little bit awkward for him here. So he's just going to go for the communication, grab the VMAX immediately, and just take the take the flips really i think here he's hoping that the six coin flips is going to be enough he needs five of the six i believe because he doesn't have any powerful colors established so really low odds that's a lot to ask for i mean this this was what i was essentially looking at it's you're right it, it's not an amazing play because you need to flip all the heads but this would basically end the game a ko here would put Frederico in an absolutely terrible position. So you're right, there definitely were other ways to go, trying to take a bench KO and then work on getting more prizes later. But, I mean, Robin, it's got zero cards in hand. I mean, this is... This is be so huge. Oh, no! <laughs> no! <laughs> I mean, he needed, he needed five of the six, so it was a big dreamer play. You have to respect it. He also knows the prizes better than we do as well, so you may have thought that taking that tempo two prize KO and setting up a backup Cramorant wasn't enough to push towards game. It gave him additional top deck as well. Uh, we also see a Crushing Hammer getting heads again, really limiting the coin flips that Robin has available to him. It is going to be the dread end into the active. Um, there was, you know, there's just a better board position for Federico here. And oh. Wow, just the Glimwood Tangle not doing it for him. Robin is just forced to concede here. And he's thinking about it, yeah, <laughs> he does He does concede in the end. So, yeah, just some awkward hands there, you know, didn't have the flips on his side. You know, when you're in that Hail Mary situation trying to get five out of six, you have to say that it wasn't just bad luck. You were really trying to make a big push there to steal a game, and he wasn't able to in that case. No, unfortunately not. And the worst bit is he did flip five <laughs> tails. <laughs> So what Not he flipped was just, well, it, it was just as lightly as what he wanted, but just the other way round. And that essentially is a downside of Cramorant. We, we just watched a free game series, right? Cramorant won one of those free games and, and unfortunately dropped Robin down to the loser's bracket. But if those flips had gone differently, Robin could have won all three of those games. And that, that's one of the things I love about Cramorant. No game, as long as you get set up, and we saw how well the deck set up. When the deck sets up, you're in every game. It's just the number of heads you need to flip that really changes. And with Eternatus' giant HP and Spiritu really putting in the work with some Crushing Hammer heads, it was just all a little bit too much. And we saw how it could have gone the other way, but in the end, Eternatus is one of the best decks for a reason. And congratulations to Frederico. Really recovered beautifully after what was a, a pretty terrible game one. <laughs> yeah, he uh, certainly got over that early game sort of lack of draw and just having nothing going for him. He had some great tech cards. He had Crushing Hammers. He had that Dangerous Drill as well as Celtic Swell actually being a huge card. Didn't allow Robin to establish that Glimwood Tangle on that final Hail Mary moment. So yeah, his tech cards really coming in clutch here to see him through uh, what is, you know, not really a deck that he prepared for, I'm sure. <laughs> no, no, you, you really don't prepare for Kramer like that. It, it's not a deck most people were taking seriously and that that's what I really love about it. You know, you see it have this 
really big finish in a 2,000 person tournament. Then you see the, the world champion or former world champion taking it to a top 16 finish, at least in this tournament, you know, still very much alive in the tournament. And I think it's a deck, it's, it's one of those that a lot of players don't take it seriously. Then a couple of results come around and all of a sudden, I think we're going to see more of this deck moving forward. It's just now to see, you know, what is the optimal build and, and how far can this deck go, both in this tournament and in future tournaments. Yeah, it's, it's surprisingly 